Hello, everyone, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join our webinar. My name is Matthew Maurer, and I am a marketing coordinator at Coastal Business Supplies. I am joined today by none other than Jimmy Lamb of Sawgrass Technologies. Jimmy is the manager of education and communications at Sawgrass and has over 25 years of experience in the apparel decoration industry. Today, he will be talking to us about Sawgrass's virtuoso print manager and how you can leverage it to get the best quality sublimation prints. And with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy Lamb. Thank you, Jimmy. Well, great to be here, Matthew. And uh, I'm really excited about this topic because I think Virtuoso Print Manager is just one of those really important features that we have created at Sawgrass to help our users. Um, a lot of people use it, but not everybody understands it. And then some people aren't even sure they're using it. So what I'm going to do is give everyone sort of first a, a brief introductory look at kind of color management and, and really simple. We're not going to get in deep here. We're just going to be simple, understanding the things that can affect the color and quality of your image during the production process. Um, and then we're actually going to go in and take a look at Virtuoso Print Manager, and I'm going to show you the features and explain them to you so that um, you can take a look at it because you may not be aware of some of the great features in there. So um, hopefully you'll walk away with some really good knowledge here. So when we start talking about any kind of digital printing, uh, the very first thing that we need to think about is the quality of the image. Because if you don't have a good image to begin with, you certainly won't have a good image on the backside on your final product. So in reality, a great image starts with a great image. Okay, Simple as that. We, color management software, all these different kind of tools, they don't make it better. They just help you maintain what it is and deliver the same quality on the output. Uh, so as we go through the production process, and I'm going to give you a nice little illustration of what that looks like. As we go through the production process from image to final piece, there are several different factors that can affect the quality of the image and the color itself. So the goal for you is to be able to anticipate and control those factors. Now that's not something that you have to sit down and mathematically you know, figure out for yourself. That's what color management software was created for and Virtuoso Print Manager, we call it VPM for short, from Sawgrass, that's exactly what it does as well. Plus it has a lot of other cool features. So managing that image from beginning to end, that's what you need to do to be able to get that picture perfect print on the back side. So let's talk briefly about what color management looks like. We have that initial image on the left-hand side, and we're trying to get that final image on the substrate over here on the right-hand side. Now, to go from image to final substrate, we have several different tools that we're using along the way. We're using a printer, obviously. We're using sublimation ink. Uh, we're using sublimation transfer paper and then we're putting everything onto a substrate designed for sublimation. Okay, So as we go through the process, though, we find that each of these individual components has an effect on the image. And because of that, the image could change in color and maybe even in quality unless we're able to compensate for these different things. And these are the main impact points that you're going to see when you're doing sublimation production or really any type of digital imaging production. Now the key to solve this is the solution that we created at Sawgrass called Virtuoso Print Manager. And the Virtuoso Print Manager comes with your system when you purchase a Virtuoso Print system. And that's the SG400, the SG800, or the VJ628. Now the VPM has advanced color controls, and we're going to take a great look at it in just a minute. Um, it works with um, Adobe, CorelDRAW, Creative Studio, Sublevea, uh, Silhouette, GraphTex. Uh, it has image ganging, uh, also known as nesting, which is a pretty cool feature. Hot folders, and we have all kinds of ICC profiles built in to take into account the, all the different effects from things like transfer papers and substrates. Okay, so there's a lot of things going on in there. Now there's another piece to this puzzle, and that's the actual sublimation system itself, okay? Because color management's one part of the process. So let's go and look again at what the components are 
in the system, when you buy a system, what are the components that make up that system? Now, the first that I'm looking at is what I call an adaptive system. It's individual components that pretty much are individual components. Okay, You have your computer, which will have some type of graphics software. You'll have a printer driver, which tells the printer how to process an image. You'll have the printer itself, and you'll have ink. But if all of these are designed independent of each other, they don't really work necessarily hand in hand. Probably the only one that was designed specifically for sublimation in this type of system was the ink. The ink was designed for that printer, and that means that the printer is equipped with the ink, so it will process the ink. The printer itself may not even understand what sublimation is. So when we go to print with an adaptive type of system, what happens is we create an image in software that probably has no idea what sublimation is. Then it delivers that final image over to the printer driver. Now, a standard off-the-shelf printer driver doesn't really know what sublimation is. It just takes the image that was handed to it, and then it's going to process that image and send it over to the printer, and then the printer is going to print it with that sublimation ink. It works, okay, but it's not always the best solution because everything is working independently. Now, at Sawgrass, we are now building what we call integrated systems, our virtuoso system. And with an integrated system, all of these components basically were designed to work with each other specifically, and they also communicate with each other. And that's important because now we have a totally integrated system. Uh, we have the printer understands what sublimation is, uh, the ink was designed for the printer. The printer was designed for the ink. The print driver was designed to process all of that. And in our case, graphics management software like Creative Studio understands that it's creating things for sublimation. So a true integrated sublimation system from Sawgrass is our Creative Studio software for graphics purposes. Um, our SG400, SG800, VJ628 printers designed from the ground up for this purpose. In fact, the SG400 and the SG800 are the only desktop printers created from the ground up specifically for sublimation. Then we have our inks, and our inks were designed specifically for the printer, whereas the printer was designed for the ink. They were actually designed together. In the adaptive system, the ink was designed to work in the printer, but the printer doesn't really know who the ink is. It's like a stranger that came to town, okay? Um, and then, of course, the final part, the one we're focusing on today is the virtuous or print manager. But my point in all of this is when all these things communicate together, you get a better image, you get better quality, you get more consistency. And every one of our systems is an integrated system, meaning that it comes with the printer, the ink, the Virtuoso Print Manager, and the Creative Studio. Okay, So I just wanted you to have that in your head kind of understanding and keep these pictures in your mind because as we start talking about what Virtuoso Print Manager does and we're talking about color management, then me showing you the, all those little pictures I just showed you, it actually makes sense. Okay, all right, so with that in mind, let's go and take a look at Virtuoso Print Manager. Yep. Bear with me as we go through this. I have two screens that I work off of, and different things will pop up on different screens, so it, it may take me a second here and there to move something from one screen to the next. So there may be moments where you don't see anything on the screen, like right now I'm going to stop showing the screen just while I change um, over, and I'm going to take the PowerPoint slides off the screen and put them down where we can get to them later and get everything set up so that we can actually work with the VPM. So just bear with me one minute while we get all of this in place so that everything will make that much more sense to you as we go. Okay, so now I'm going to share a different screen with you and we're going to look at my screen of monitor one, because I, I just want to point something out, then I'm going to go to a bigger screen, which will give you a bigger picture. Um, when you're working with VPM, once you install your VPM, 
it will put down in the very bottom right hand corner an icon that we can see in my lower toolbar which is a very light green with a V and that's our Virtuoso Print Manager and that's where we get into um, VPM is by clicking on that and then that will open up for example a menu here that we can work with okay now there's some other different ways to get an image into VPM as you'll see as we go but this is basically our starting point here now with VPM if you're using Creative Studio then your Creative Studio images output by default to VPM so when you go to print it goes straight to VPM it pops up on the screen by itself you didn't have to do anything but if you're working with um, images that you wish to import okay maybe you've already created an image and it's sitting in a file and you just want to import it into VPM for printing then you would actually come down here to the menu so we're going to do that first to just kind of show you how everything works I'm going to go down click on VPM it's going to pull up my menu and I'm going to go to open local file so I'm going to click on this and what it's done here is it's it's gone into my computer in this case it happened to go into a pictures file okay because I've been in there a little bit earlier so let's say that I want to print um, one of these race cars so I'm gonna grab this one right here and then click open and what's gonna happen now is you see a window pops up says virtuous or print manager and it brings with it that particular image okay and then we can go and do different things to that particular image. Okay, and this is something you need to do every time you print. I know a lot of you, it's like, okay, it pops up and we hit print and it prints and we don't worry about it beyond that. But remember, I was telling you about the things that affect color. So we can see those things right here. The substrate, what's it actually going to go on? Uh, we see a nice big list here of different things that we can choose from. Um, we do a lot of Unisub. I'll use Unisub for this. The next thing is which paper are you using? And a lot of you use TextPrintR, for example. Um, you can see different brands. If you don't see the brand you use, then I would say stick with TruePix Classic as your paper. Uh, I'm going to use TextPrintR just for showing you purposes here. Uh, do we need to mirror that image or not? Um, the default for a VPM is mirror, but you can actually change the defaults, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So, you know, check to see if it needs to be mirrored or not. We have three different speed settings, high speed, high quality, advanced photo. By choosing the different speeds, it may change the list of substrates. For example, if I go to advanced photo and I look under substrates, what do I see? I see a limited list because advanced photo was created for specific types of products. And that's why we don't see the big list like when we're choosing high quality. So you can see, well, high quality, we're getting a lot of other things here. And if you go to high speed, you may get some other things that you don't see under high quality. So it's important to figure out your speed setting. Most of us use high quality, but there are times where high speed will be just fine. And then we'll choose out of here. Um, if you don't see what you're looking for here, and a good example right now is, um, well, actually, most everything is in there. For this particular setting so you look for what you want you have your setting you have your paper okay what are other things that we need to look at um, we also need to go to the color tab because with a color tab we're going to tell the system what type of image is it and you can see in the drop down list we have photographic we have vivid and if you if you take any image and put it into the system and then go to the different color modes you can actually see it change a little bit every time I click on something um, we have a grayscale, you know, if we're looking to get that kind of look, uh, and we have our cool gray here as well. Um, the classic really refers back to the classics one that people have used an, an older system that didn't have VPM and are moving into VPM, but that maybe they had our power driver before in the older system. The classic is to kind of help them match those settings they used in the past. Uh, most of you are probably just going to be using maybe the top three here. Uh, we also have the ability to make some adjustments. You do have to be careful. I'm going to make a giant adjustment here just so you can see. Um, if you make a big adjustment, you see that what's happening here. 
this is just for helping you to, to tweak just a little bit. Sometimes we're trying to make the image a little warmer or a little cooler. And we're using these things to kind of do that. Because you have to keep in mind that if you increase your red, that means you're increasing red in every color that uses red. And that goes beyond just the color red. So we want to make sure that if we're using the color adjustment tools, we're doing very small increments. And that means a lot of testing. And so I know a lot of you, you, you're, you don't want to go do all that testing, and, and you don't necessarily. And that's okay. I understand that. Um, but these tools are here. Because you may have a special situation where you really do have to tweak that image to get it just right. And, you know, in any of these tools you can play with and kind of see what they do for you. All right? Okay. So, so far we've identified our material. We identified the type of uh, image that we're using in our color mode. So now let's look at two more tabs here. Uh, we have our layout. And with our layout tab, you have two options here. Right now you see preserve layout from designer that means that if maybe this was set up in you know photoshop or a program like that and it was centered on the page or whatever it, it just preserves that layout and that's what it brings in and you can see it brought it in and it's telling you it's an image that's 6.4 inches by 3.3 inches um, and and that's how it's laid out now you can add you can have vpm itself perform a layout and there's a really important reason why you would do that because VPM is going to try and put as many images on the same page as it can. When you do preserve layout from designer, it's pretty much going to be one image per page. So if we're using VPM performs layout, and then I want to actually bring in more images, or maybe I'm doing multiples of that image, it will try to fill the page up. So let's do that real quick. Let's do multiples of this particular image and see what happens. So I'm going to go to the jobs page and you can see this is the image I brought in and it is selected and I'm going to go down to copies and I'm going to say two copies and look what it does. It puts them in. I think I can get three on this page. Yes, I can. So I actually got three of those on the page. So we call that nesting or ganging because we're getting multiple things on the same page. Um, you notice they're really close together, like touching each other. So if we go back to the Layout tab, we have something called Spacing, where we can put spacing in between the images. So you see how I space that out? Um, sometimes that's going to make it easier for you if you're going to cut the paper number one, or if you're going to sublimate multiple substrates at the same time. Um, you'll also notice on the Layout page that we have paper size. It's defaulted to 8.5 by 11. But suppose you have an SG800 with a bypass tracing do 13 by 19 so I'm going to choose that paper and you can see we can get a lot more on that paper right so we could go back down to jobs and just keep adding more in and just till it fills up right let's see now it said the page is full and it went over to the next page so once it feels like the page is full it's going to go to the next page now if it felt like it could get more images in here by turning maybe this one sideways or something, that's something that it would do as well. It does try to calculate how to maximize that particular page out. All right, another neat thing here is that, remember I started out by just importing in this one race car image? Well, I can actually um, show or import other images at the same time. So I'm going to go to the plus right here. And this time I'm going to bring in another race car, uh, which is this one here. And so now I've brought in another one, and it's going to try to figure out where it can put it. And it obviously couldn't fit it there, but on the next page it did fit it. So you see how it's putting in, trying to figure out the spacing. So we can continue putting in different images just to you know fill this up, just to demonstrate how all that works. Um, here we have another race car, so let's put it in there. And it puts it right there. So you see how it's trying to fill in all the space here um, by you know, managing those. So that is controlled by VPM Performs Layout and also by the paper size. So it's important to choose the right paper size, of course, paper that you can use in your printer. Uh, then the jobs is simply letting us see what the jobs are see how many copies or set the copies, and we can even change the sizing of these images if we need to. 
So we have a lot of functionality here because we can just fill that page up all we want. Okay. Um, if you have images that are too big for a page, it'll tell you that. So that's that's some really cool functionality here, right? Um, so the material, the layout, the jobs, and the color tabs are the ones that you're going to use or should be using on each and every job. Uh, the other just gives you um, the print to file is really something for working with tech support for some troubleshooting purposes. Uh, the annotate page means that it's actually going to add in information to the page um, about the images. So that's something to play with to see what kind of information comes across that you think is important if you want to have that or not. You don't have to use that. One other thing I want you to notice is most of you just have one printer and therefore most of you just have one printer ink. Because remember I told you it was the printer, the ink, the paper, the substrate, the speed, and in this case to the color mode that really have that kind of effect on color management. But some of you may have more than one printer. You can see I'm set up for three different printers. So if you had more than one printer, you're always going to make sure before you print anything, you've selected the right one. Now, if you have the 800 or the 400, you only have one ink choice, which is I'm on the 800 right now, the Silverjet HD. That, that's it. Or Chromablast. I'm sorry, we also have Chromablast too, if you're a Chromablast user. If you happen to be a VJ628 user, um, here you will see three of the different ink sets that we actually have. You don't see the Flex, because Flex is normally used in conjunction with a RIP, uh, not currently with VPM. Okay, so just notice all that aspect. So everything you need to do to get the color set right is here. That's my whole point. Everything is here. Once you've gone and keyed in everything you need to do, then you hit print. It goes to the print and it prints. Okay, that's how it works. I mean, that's um, in a nutshell how you're going to use VPM for routine printing. Oh, but there's a lot more. Okay, um, we're looking at this information here and we see these different values. And, you know, it came up with values that were defaulted. Can you change the defaults? Yes. Can you set your own defaults? Yes. Can you create custom default settings? Yes. Okay. This is called a hot folder. Now, when you use your Virtuoso system, you know, your brand new system, it actually comes with two built-in hot folders. The first one is like we see right here. Um, which is the Virtuoso hot folder. The second one is what Creative Studio goes through, which is the downloads folder. Uh, with Creative Studio, we recommend Chrome. And when you're using Creative Studio in Chrome, every time it downloads an image, it sends it to the download folder, okay, uh, which is a hot folder of sorts. So a hot folder really is a collection of settings that if we put an image in that folder, all the settings of the folder automatically apply to the image. So you don't have to manually do it. So let me give you an example of how we can create our own. Okay, So I am going to go into our Virtuoso Print Manager, click on our button here, and I'm going to go to our Hot Folder Manager, click on that, and what's going to pop up is a window that looks strangely like the one we were just in, but it's a little bit different, okay? At the very top, it's actually listing out what our different hot folders are currently. The Virtuoso hot folder is a default folder that comes with the system. When you install it, that's the default folder that everything goes through. The Downloads folder is the default folder that everything from Creative Studio goes through. Okay, In either case, you can make changes. I don't recommend it. Um, I recommend you create new folders when you want to make specific changes and maybe just leave those where they are. On the other hand, you know, if you really want to change your Virtuoso hot folder because you just think you can use the same settings all the time, which is not really true. Um, you're, you're welcome to do that. Still up to you. But let me show you how easy it is to make your own. So I'm going to make a hot folder for printing on glass. And I'm choosing glass specifically because glass is one of those substrates that you don't print on the front. You print on the back. Therefore, you don't mirror it. Okay, so I just I wanted to show that off. All right, so we go over here and we click on our plus button to make a new folder. And then we got to designate where it's going. I usually put mine on desktop because it's an easy thing to find. So I'm going to click on desktop. Then I'm going to click on make new folder. And I'm going to give that folder a new name. And we're going to call it glass. And then I'm going to click OK to save that. 
And you can see it's now been added up here at the top into my hot folder manager list. You see hot folder and you see glass um, all right there. Now I can put in the new defaults. Okay, let's go to substrate. Um, we're going to do glass, right? So why don't we choose um, acrylic or glass. Here we are. It says ceramic glass. Okay, I'm thinking of acrylic because with acrylic we also print on the back side of it. Uh, but definitely with glass, I'm going to choose this one. And then I'm going to unmirror it because we print on the back side. Okay, and see it through the glass. Uh, maybe I'm using text print R, so I'm going to put that. Uh, typically, it's going to be high quality printing for that. Uh, it would not be advanced photo, and I don't know if high speed's good enough. Okay, I will make sure I have it selected for my printer. Maybe it's my. You know, remember, I have three of them. You probably just have one, but also you do identify your printer because this is applying to the printer and your ink if you have multiple ones. Okay, um, let's go to color. And let's say that majority of my glass is photographic. I'm just going to leave it as photographic. Uh, there may be a situation that after I've printed a lot of times, I realize that my glass settings look a little better if I change the contrast. So through experimentation, I can certainly do that if I needed to do that. Uh, that that's something up to you. Okay. Uh, layout. Um, I'm going to have Verp VPM automatically perform the layout every time, but I don't have to. You know. If everything I'm doing is pretty much the same size going on the same thing, maybe I preserve the layout from designer. It's totally up to you. If I'm doing VPN performs layout, I can also put the default paper size. And just for reference, I'm going to put in 8.5 by 14. Uh, so I'm, I'm building my defaults, as you can see. Okay. Um, this is a very important one, the hot folder tab, because you need to identify the file types. Uh, the Sawgrass files are from Creative Studio. Uh, we can read PNG, JPEG, and PDF. Now, to read a PDF, the very first time you set this up, it will tell you you have to install Ghost Script. And uh, that's the easiest thing in the world to do. You'll get directions when you do it. Follow directions. You only got to do it once. Once it's in there, you can read a PDF with um, VPM. Over here, we have some options. Um, if you choose automatically print, what happens is... Um, I'm going to show you in just a second how we put an image into a hot folder, a little different than what we did with opening a local file. If I go drop an image literally into a hot folder, um, either the window is going to pop up and say, here's all your settings. Do you want to change any of the defaults for this job or not? And if you know you never want to do that, you would choose automatically print, and that means that the image would bypass that window popping up, go straight to the printer. So people that do a lot of production of the same thing over and over again will sometimes go with auto print. Um, but if you really want to have that option of say, hey, I might want to change the default on any given job, don't choose that. Archive means that it will save a copy of everything you print in that hot folder. So that's what archive is for. Uh, um, a lot of times we don't choose it because it starts spilling up a folder full of you know images. But if it's you know, something you want to do to save them in that folder, that's fine. It's there. You can go out to the folder and print from it again. So um, that's pretty much what we have going on there. And you can also tell it automatically annotate the page or not. So we make all these settings here. And then when we're happy with them, we click Save. Now, if we look, we're looking at my desktop. And on my desktop, you can still see there is a glass folder. Okay. And you can see the Virtuoso Hot folder right there. So let's pull over a file and see if I can drag and drop it in there like I want to do. And I'm going to take, um, we'll take the race car, and we will bring it over here and see if it dropped in. Yes, it did drop in. See what happens? Um, I dropped it in the glass folder. The screen pops up with all those defaults I just put in. You see here? Glass is my default. There's my paper default. Um, if we go and look in our layout, there's I made that paper default, 8.5 by 14, VPM. So those are all the defaults that I just put in. I can change them because the window popped up. Now, if I change it on this window, it only changes it just temporarily for this one printing job. After that, the defaults are still there. You have to go back to Hot Folder Manager to change the true defaults. But if I'm happy with everything that's there, then I'm going to click print. It's going to go to the printer, and, and off it goes. Okay. Um, if I'm not happy, I can make changes right here. 
uh, to suit me. And by the way, we also have a magnifying glass over here. And a magnifying glass is a way that you can zoom in and really get a good look at something that you've created if you want to take one more look you know, before you go. Uh, and at this point, too, if you wanted to add more images, say, you know, I only set out for one. I dropped one in the hot folder. Oops, I forgot. I need to print a couple of other things. Go click on jobs, click on the plus, and go find those other jobs that you meant to print at the same time. Okay, um, and you know, remember we're just dealing with race cars, so oh, I forgot to do that one too. So you know, that way we can go ahead and pull another one in. So we still have all those features, but you saw what I did, right? I created a hot folder, and then I was able to drop an image right in. It's pretty cool. Okay, so let me show you another way you can use that because when we are using uh, the Virtual Studio Print Manager, we can use it. Obviously, as I said before, outside of Creative Studio, uh, we can import a file, which I showed you. We drop something into a folder, which I showed you. Um, suppose we're working with a Corel Draw. Now, I have Corel Draw on here. Give me one minute to pull it up. The same thing that I'm getting ready to show you right here um, is going to be the um, same kind of concept that you would do with, say, Photoshop. Okay, or Illustrator. So let me import an image, and uh, we'll um, we'll stick with race cars. Why not? Okay, just because I can't. Hey, let's do the Hawksbill Turtle. That'll be fun. Let's import this guy. So, all right. So there, I have the turtle. And whatever I'm going to do with the turtle. I mean, if you're really setting this up for sublimation, you're then going to import in a template for the substrate, and then you're going to size it and crop it and all that stuff. Okay, I'm just trying to keep this simple. So I have this image here. One way that we print is to do what we call file print. Click File, go down to Print, and what you're going to do is you're going to get a list of your printers right here, Printer, and don't go to your printer. And if this is how you're printing right now, that means you're totally bypassing the VPM and you're not getting the benefit of the color management for sublimation that VPM provides. Just because you see that printer, don't choose the printer here. Choose VPM, Virtuoso Print Manager. So you choose the Virtuoso Print Manager. Also, please keep this in mind. I'm going to show you where to go to do it. When you're setting up Corel Draw for the first time, there are some settings that we recommend that you make. They're, they're, they're easy to find. I'm going to show you where you can go to a video that tells you what to do. But there are a couple of different settings that you're going to make in here to do this. Okay, so we know we can do this without file print. But the other cool thing here is to do a file save as. And when I do the file save as, again, make sure it's in the right format. And I'm going to save this as a PDF because I know it can print a PDF. So I'm going to go with PDF. And I'll give it a name, Turtle. So remember, I'm doing a save as, but where am I saving it to? Um, I want to save it to my desktop, but then let's find the folder, Virtuoso Hot Folder. So that's the hot folder. That's, that's the default hot folder. There's the glass hot folder. So if I put it into that folder, for example, um, I can save it, and it's going to go into that folder, and the folder is going to apply um, all of the settings within the folder to it, and then it's going to actually take it and print it at the same time. So um, just make sure every all the settings are set up the right way, set up to go print, then drop it in the folder you want to print it in, and it's going to send it down to your Virtuoso Print Manager. Okay, so the same kind of concepts work with other programs, okay? Just make sure that you first go in and, and set up any settings that are required. Where do you find that kind of information? Let's go back to our Virtuoso Print Manager and you see video resources. So this will help you if you're setting up your um, 400 or 800 printer and you're going to be using some of those um, other types of programs like Photoshop and CorelDRAW, Illustrator, it will, if you follow this link, it will take you to where those settings are so that you go and set the correct settings up the right way, okay? All right, another really cool thing which will really illustrate quite well uh, color management is our palette manager. So we find that here in our um, menu. And when we go in here into our menu, 
we have a palette choice, and I'm going to choose ColorSure. ColorSure is our standard basic palette of sublimation-friendly colors. If you work within Creative Studio, you have an initial set of colors in there. That's what these are, okay? Our palette, our ColorSure palette. Now, I turned it on so we can see them, but we can also disable it if we don't want to use it. So what's the purpose of having ColorSure or having any custom colors? Well, as that color moves through, I'm going to use cyan blue as an example, top of the page here. The true input value or RGB value for cyan pro blue is 0, 174, and 239. However, you see all these settings over here? Based on these settings, an 800, the high quality speed, uh, metallic gold, text print R, vivid color sure, whatever, if we've gone and opened up the actual uh, palette for um, the color sure palette, this is the setting based on these variables that will, this is the original color, this is the new color. So see the system looks at the color, looks at everything that can affect the color, and then it calculates a new output color. But, the, but I know that starts sounding really confusing. What you want to understand here is any time that you have decided this is the color you need to use, any time you use that color, the system will see these values and automatically turn them to those values. That is a spot color. That is a specific color um, that you are in control of. Now, this becomes important when we're trying to match corporate logos. You know, I hear people a lot of times say, hey, you know what, I couldn't, I couldn't quite get the right color, and, you know, and they weren't sure how to actually go do it. Well, there is a process to do it, and you can really match colors if you're willing to take the time to do that, and that's what the palette manager does. So let me give you an example, and we're going to go make a color. Uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of disable that, and we'll turn on maybe Jimmy Chart. Okay, <laughs> see, I got one color in there. Okay, so first of all, we need to say, what are we going to print this on? Because depending on, on our settings, the colors can vary, right? So I've got a Subjet SG800. I'm going to use high quality. Um, let's say I want to do this on Unicell products. And uh, let's disable that again. I'm going to do this on Unicell products using text print R. And my color mode will be photographic. Okay. All right, so I want to add a color. This is a new palette that I'm designing. Or you can add more colors to ColorSure if you wish. If we go through and we leave that on, when we add new colors, it'll be down there at the bottom. That's totally up to you. Do you want to create a whole new palette yourself? Okay, and give it a name because you could create different color palettes for different customers or different products. It's totally up to you. Um, if you want it to be part of ColorSure, then you want to make sure ColorSure is enabled. If not, we'll use disabled. Um, I'm just going to leave it blank right now just kind of for simplicity. Okay, so first of all, we got to identify these settings before we do anything else. Now we're going to create a color. So I'm going to go to add, and I'll start off here, and let's say I'm trying to get a certain shade of red. Okay, so do the best you can to get a screen color. Keep in mind that your screen rarely shows the true RGB color. It shows close, but not the exact. Everybody thinks everything on the screen is exact, and it's not. The exact is what comes out of the printer and it gets sublimated onto something. You don't know the exact color until it ends up sublimated on a product. Then you know the exact color. Okay? You get close with the screen, but then we're going to fine tune it by actually printing and pressing. So we have a couple things going on. You see me moving the cursor and you see the RGB values changing here as I move it. If I knew the RGB values, if somebody gave them to me, I could type them in here or I could use the little slider. So I got lots of different ways to do this, all right? So I'm creating a color. I'm going to call it uh, red three. And just for fun, so we can follow the process, you can see that the color I selected, uh, the numbers are 218, 33, and 42, okay? You see the numbers right down here. All right, keep that in mind. Okay, that's the RGB value I have chosen as my input value. I'm going to click Next, and I'm going to say, whoa, what is that? Well, it gives me a big chart. Now, look at the very top. It says Starting Color, and that color is 219, 13, and 81. But on the page before, the one I set it was actually different values. It wasn't those values. So what happened was automatically, already, VPM 
based on all the little input values. Remember, we put in the printer, we put in the ink, we put in the paper, all that stuff. We did that. We set a starting color. It looked at all those other variables and said, hey, we're going to have to modify this color to make sure that we maintain the right output. So this is the new suggested color that we would actually output to match that input. Okay? And then you see this huge chart. <laughs> you say, what the heck am I going to do with that? Well, I'll tell you that this color right here, the suggested starting color, is right here in the very middle. And as you work out diagonally from the center, there are different variations, small incremental changes in the numbers to give you all these other variations of that starting color. So if you want to see color incremental being very small, too small. It doesn't change the size of the block. It has to do with the incremental change of color. Medium is the default, and then you got large here where you see large variations. Okay, you got to print this, and you got to press it, because it's the only way you know what the colors look like. Because when it comes out on paper, you don't want to show you the right colors. You got to actually press the sucker, right? So you tell it the printer, you tell it the size paper you're putting it on, uh, and then you say print. And you're going to hear mine print in the background, most likely, unless it's out of paper. Uh, so ignore the noise. So while it's printing, Okay, um, then once it starts printing, it will let you go to the next page. So I'm going to click next page, and while it's printing, what does it tell me to do? You got to press it, and you got to press it on the substrate that you set this thing up for. I started out with the Unisub products, okay, with all those little settings. That's what I need to actually press this out on so we can see what the true colors are. So basically, that's what you're going to do. It's going to print out, and you're going to press it onto that type of product, and then you're going to see what the colors really look like. You just did a whole chart. Think about it. You're printing out a whole chart, and you'll be able to see what the colors look like. Now, once you're holding that chart in front of you, remember all the little squares? Okay. You go down, and you start looking at the squares until you find the one that's the closest to what you're trying to achieve. And there will be an RGB value written underneath every one of those little squares on that printout. And... That way you can look at it and say, let's see. By the way, this was the starting color. The recommended starting color was 219.13.81. Okay, and it was in that very center of the chart. But you can look at all the other ones because you've got this beautiful color palette right there in front of you. Nothing but reds. There are variations of this. If that's the one you want to use, say use this output. If you find a different square on there that you think the color is better, put those colors in there. And then say, use this output. If you feel like you need to do another chart, you can. But by looking at this first chart, you can probably pick out the best match. And remember, now you know what the output looks like. What you did on the screen was the input that looked right on the screen. But now we're getting the right output. And what we've done is we've created a process to match the output to the input. Okay? That's what we're trying to do. So I'm going to say, use this output. Click Next. And you can see... That's that original value I put in. So any time the color with the RGB values of 218, 33, and 42 comes into VPM and your palette manager is enabled, then it's going to actually print this color, which will give you the output that matches that input. Does that make sense? I know sometimes yeah, I've gotten to do this a lot, so it makes sense to me. But uh, for you guys, first time it might be, wow. All right, so you know it saves it in my palette. That's the only color I got in my palette, okay, uh, right there. But there it's saved. Now I can do stuff with this. I can actually, you know, the idea is you would build a bigger palette, okay. You can do whatever you want. But you can export this um, to Adobe and to Corel Draw and even a Creative Studio. So you can create unique colors here, check them all out, and then actually export them to Creative Studio where they can be used there as well. Now, one of the things here that might give you a little bit of a headache, okay? Sorry, don't want to give you a headache, but I'm just trying to explain everything to you. You see all these values up here? That color was created based on those values. So just as a reminder, I'm going to write those suckers down. Um, and, and I'm going to show you why this is important, okay? And photo, there we go. All right, um, we can save this as Jimmy 2, because I think there is Jimmy 1. Ha, okay. All right, 
So the width from this color palette was Jimmy too. Remember, we can put as many colors as we want on there, whatever. Okay, so we've created this custom color. How do we actually get to use that custom color? Let's go back into VPM real quick, and let's just pull something in real quick. So we'll go to open local file. Uh, I'll bring in uh, one of my race cars again. And, and, <laughs> and there we go. Okay. So it was still processing some other things. Uh, let's see. I don't want that annotated page. Let's get rid of that. All right. So we're going to go to color. And we're going to say, oh, yeah, I want to be able to use that red in here, right? Uh, and I'm going to click my palette, and it, the, the red's not listed. Remember, I called the palette Jimmy 2. The only thing I see is color sure and disable. Where's the one I just created? Ah, let's go back over here. Um, SG800, Unisub product, high quality, but I was using text print R paper, okay? And on color, I was using photographic. All right, so let's go back to here, and guess what? Now when I choose it, it brings up Jimmy 2. And, and the, the point here is the colors I was creating in that palette were generated based on certain input values. So those colors won't be visible to you except when you are using those same input values, if that makes sense. Because what we're trying to get is dead on spot match color that's perfect every time you'd use that combination of variables, okay? That's why it's set up that way. Now, I'm telling you, you can play with this, and as soon as you just start playing with it a little bit, it's so cool, everything it'll do, and it'll start making sense to you, okay? All right, well, we're going to have to wrap up here shortly. So I want to show you a couple other things real quick. Now I'm going to do, jump on the questions. A lot of good questions there. I then have two extra polling questions I want to ask you as well. Okay. All right. So let's go take a look at um, our Virtuoso one more time. See all the menu here? we got some other things that are in the menu. And uh, there's our video resources, which I mentioned, which is pretty good. And we also have some help, like if we want to check for updates to VPM, that's how you're going to do it. Just go to help. Go to check for updates. I already know that mine's up to date. Okay, I checked earlier. Here's a new feature. It's called Manage Page Sizes. So we can actually create custom page sizes. Um, you set up your printer. You start with a certain paper size. You create a custom size and then go to Save As. So you actually can add more page sizes into your VPM. That is a really cool feature that's fairly recent with VPM. Um, if you have a new printer you want to set up, I mean, you just bought a new printer, uh, go right here, and you can go and, and, and go start setting it right up. I'm going to tell you something really exciting for all of you that have actually set up VPN before. Um, in our next release, which we are working on, in our next release, we're going to have a greatly simplified way of setting up VM, VPM. Okay? I mean, basically, you're just going to set up your a, a one-time login with um, Sawgrass, and then you're going to be able to use that to... Uh, set all this up and it's going to save you a lot of time and some of the extra steps. Not hard to do right now. I've set up a lot of these. But for now, yeah, you set up a new printer. It can take you right to where you need to go. Um, under options, uh, certainly if you wanted to change the language, you could. But addition is interesting. We're actually creating some different additions for some of these new paper products like Forever Paper, which allows you to print uh, um, on the cotton, okay, using sublimation. And if you buy any of these papers from uh, the sublimation resellers, um, ask them for the information for setting it up because there will be a code involved that you'll put into your VPM so you can enable that. I'll, I'll have two versions myself. I have Sawgrass and I have one for Forever Paper. So if I'm going to print with Forever Paper, I'm going to come over here and check that one instead so that I'm using in internal values to make sure I get the best image out. Okay, um, Printer utilities, real quick on our printer utilities, this is where we go to check our ink levels. Uh, I don't have a 400 hooked up. Uh, this is where we go to check our ink levels. Uh, this is where we do our nozzle checks and our head cleanings. Uh, you can do a primary chart print, but typically it's bottom three here is something you would do with tech support. For your purposes, you're going to check levels, you're going to um, do head cleanings and nozzle checks. Okay, uh, so that's that. So all pretty simple, straightforward stuff. 
Okay, a couple of other things real quick here. Um, I do want to mention, I mean, if you're using Virtuoso Print Manager, a lot of you are using our Creative Studio too, and we have done some uh, new things. We're doing actually a lot of new things right now with um, Creative Studio. And one of the things I just wanted to show you that we had going on, and give me one second here while I pull all that up, is we started recently with um, what we called a, a premium package. And let me change screens real quick. Um, we're going to go to screen of monitor two. There we go. And some of you are aware of that, some may not be. Uh, well, we, we got a lot of feedback, a lot of feedback from customers saying, hey, listen, we need more images. You know, we love that you have some images in there, et cetera. And what we actually did was we started creating uh, new images, and we're really working closely now with some um, key uh, artists to create some real nice top-level type quality images that you still have all the images that came free with your system, but going into a more premium type, uh, we do have a subscription service where you can automatically get new images you know, sent into your system every month. So you're still going to have everything that you ever had. Nothing changes. If you don't subscribe, nothing changes to your system. But if you are interested in that, there will be new things coming in across many of the different um, avenues and subjects of the existing image files. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in, uh, it's normally $19.95 a month, and right now we have a special offer starting tomorrow that's 30% off for three months. So for 30, for three months, it'll be 30% off $19.95 each month, and there's a promo code called MARCH30. And all you do is go to the Sawgrass website, sawgrassinc.com, and click on um, Creative Studio, and just kind of follow the steps there to order what we call Creative Pass Plus, which is our membership program for the premium designs. And if you put that code in there, it will apply. Uh, if you want an annual membership, it's discounted off of the, the monthly. So at $199.95 a month, uh, excuse me, a year, uh, that's a savings of nearly two months for free. So if you're looking for that, then you give, give it a try. I mean, you know, just sign up for a couple of months, see how it's going to look. But I'm telling you, starting in March, we got a lot of really good-looking stuff coming your way. So just something to check out. It's a special offer from Sawgrass uh, if you're interested in that. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up there. We, we, we me, have gone five, five, five hours and 15 minutes. So a, a lot of you stayed. That's that's awesome. So I, if you didn't get a question and answer, there's a few that I didn't get to, unfortunately. Um, I do have a record of those. So they actually get saved. And I'll go through and look at those. But also, you can feel free to email success at sawgrassinc.com. And that will go to me. And as always, pick up the phone, call support at Coastal. That's what they're there for. Great staff there to help you out with those kind of problems. So, uh, Matthew, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Um, I had a great session today. Look forward to next month. Yeah, uh, thanks so much again, Jimmy. I, I really appreciated your uh, presentation here. and. No, I especially enjoyed your tutorial on the hot folders. I know as a sublimator, we're always trying to find ways to save time. Uh, because time equals money and having the ability to save your settings, especially for unique products like glass that don't require uh, mirroring is awesome. And the fact that you know so many people don't know that these exist is so great that you shared it. But um, that's it for me. If anyone has any questions for Coastal, don't hesitate to give us a call, email Coastal, or email support at coastalbusiness.com. Um, and again, thanks so much to everyone who turned out today. And thank you, Jimmy. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you guys next month. Bye.